Hello everybody and welcome back! We're doing it again, we're doing another YouTube. Um, in this video, I want to do something a little bit of fun, a little bit of funky. Uh, the last couple of videos, the malware analysis video, people seem to really enjoy and really like. Uh, and the recent giveaway video for Fawaz's Try Hack Me Room, people seem to really like that I kind of went in cold, going in blind, not exactly knowing what was going on and for having me suffer and figure it out all along the way. So, what we're doing in this video is a good synthesis of the two. Uh, like that, like a little butterfly thing. Um, so let's get to it. I'll hop over to my computer screen here and uh, we'll get to the fun stuff. So here I am in my good old terminal boy and I'm going to ls in the current directory that I'm in, which is called notepad.js because I have this peculiar file here, notepad.js. So this is a little artifact, right? This is a little something, something that we found. And uh, I want to take a gander at what this thing is. Uh, obviously, file is just going to tell me like, hey, this is plain text. It's ASCII. It has some long lines in there. And it was originally found on a Windows host, right? Hence JS. It is not, in fact, JavaScript, but it is JScript, one of those sweet little scripting languages that will inherently run natively on Windows. Uh, so it's a little spooky, a little spooky wooky. But let's take a gander at what this thing is. So uh, I'll fire up my... Sublime text editor here, and I've got this notepad.js file <laughs> And you can see that there's some fun stuff going on. So uh, let's I'm, I'm gonna actually save this right I'm gonna save this as original notepad.js just so I can kind of maintain that backup and then I'll save another copy of it as a deobfuscated because obviously while I'm looking at this thing I'm gonna need to make some sense of it. So let's do it and uh, again, I don't exactly know where this is going to go. I started this process and then I was like, you know what? This might make a stellar video. So uh, let's get cranking and uh, figure out what we might be doing here. Uh, we are running JScript code and we have some variables defined that are nonsense like JDFFFJF. <laughs> and it seems to create a string with gf as kind of a variable maybe indicated in powershell syntax with uh random zeros and ones and plus signs so i'm not exactly positive what this might be doing i don't know if it's adding these numbers together for some reason um but some of them i see end in like a plus plus or a plus on their own so that wouldn't actually be adding anything, but that goes on for a, a long while. Like check out my scroll bar here down at the bottom. We're cruising for quite some time. So that it might be something uh, neato benito. Let's, uh, oh, there's a pipe there also at the end on that, that last one here. So maybe that's gonna do something wonky. Let's call that GF. <laughs> Let's call that that GF variable because that's apparently all that we know so far. And this GF variable, if it were in fact PowerShell, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fire up a virtual box because I've got a Windows VM that I kind of want to poke around and, and see if I can get anything nice with this. Uh, it, let's explore that PowerShell. Actually, I could probably do it on PowerShell on my Linux host, actually. Do I have that? Will that, will that just kind of behave? Open we'll up a little PowerShell down here. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it for me? Thank you. Let's uh, make that profile blue so I know that I'm in a different shell there. And okay, let's uh, slap in that GF code. <laughs> Copy and paste that. Poop it in right there. And yeah, it's like, I don't know what to do with these plus signs, dude. <laughs> I feel you on that one, man. So GF variable, although it seemingly ends like that is inside of a parenthesis like array or tuple thing. So I'm pretty sure if that ends, but it ends here, maybe that's just, maybe the second one, this TLFKLMSDF. <laughs> How would you pronounce that? Tolkfmolstuf? <laughs> that's gotta be uh, a GF continued, continued. There we go. Okay, so let's save those. And uh, looks like we do things with them with these functions here. So let's start to figure out what those actually are. Oh, that's actually being passed into this fell. <laughs> so let's see what our good friend fell does. Where is he referenced? Okay, scrolling down. There's not a lot to this. This is actually just 75 lines of code. So we might have some fun with this here, but let's see what we do. 
Uh, EBGOF fell. <laughs> that function splits on plus signs and joins them together with ones. Okay. So I think if this is just essentially JavaScript code, I mean, obviously it's JScript, but it has the same engine structure as JavaScript, then doing the string, manip string manipulation stuff like this should be something that I can just do in Node, or like Node.js to be able to kind of test this server side in locally. So let's try that. If I put my PowerShell away, can I do a little Node.js in here? All right, and I'm in a prompt, so I can console.log. Hello world. Oh, actually, let's get, you know what? Let's get something better. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, it works. <laughs> let's take this giant line and let's call that GF. Slap that in. Okay. Now I've got my GF. There he is. And let's get this function split on, we'll call this like split. No, now I want to search for that and replace it, please. So split plus, how about that? Let's actually take that function and also slap that in here. So now I have my good friend split plus, and we would need to pass in some strings. So the plus signs are gonna end up being essentially replaced with ones. That kind of clues me in that uh, it's probably going to be binary code. Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, so um, then we also need to do that on our little GF continued here. So slap that in. Now let's do a little split plus and they were adding on split plus GF continued plus plus GF continued. And now we have this whole thing. Okay, so let's awkwardly try and copy this entire string and let's save this as just another randomness. Uh, let's just call this gf variable dot text. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, um, I'm, I know there's a pipe there at the end, but I'm gonna ignore that for now, right at this very moment. I kinda wanna see if this is in fact binary. So, you know what, let's, let's open a little web browser and go to the most elite website that there is, ascii2hex.com, and <laughs> let's see if this binary actually comes out to be anything. It's probably going to be like a binary file. Okay, ascii2hex.com, what's going on? What's, how are you doing? Where are you at? Who are you? Where are you? Uh, rapid tables could do it, ascii table could do it. Let's go to that rapid tables. Uh, binary, that, never mind. That's not going to do it for me. How is there not an ASCII to hex.com? I see it like in different representations of ASCII, the word two, and then, uh, oh, I got to split these on like that. Oh, ooh, look at that. Look at that. That looks like PowerShell code to do funky stuff. All right, let's save that as a uh, GF powershell.ps1, yeah. And we will need to obfuscate that later. Let me table that for now uh, because we haven't exactly finished making sense of our good old notepad JS, but we do know that this eventually becomes PowerShell code. I don't know what these other functions are doing though. So uh, let's figure that out. Um, we basically figured out these things. We basically figured out those. Now let's see what else we got. I don't exactly know where to go with this, truth be told. Um, script full name. Script full name replacing the script full name. Is that going to take the path? I feel like that's gonna get the path. Because script full name is going to be the absolute path and then you're replacing the script name with nothing. So I think it's just getting the path of this path. Let me, let me replace that. I'm pretty sure wscript.fullname will be the absolute path of this program or this running script. And then we're removing the script file name with nothing. I just repeated myself <laughs> to make sure I got that point across. I'm pretty sure that's the path or folder for this script. How about that? 
So it checks if the folder for this script is equal to this thing, which we know is set to something's username, app data roaming. Uh, so let's change that to app or current user app data roaming. I'm going to be using long verbose variable names here so I can actually understand what this is doing. Um, and if this is actually able to retrieve the username, it's probably going to be like wscript.shell or something. I have a feeling. Uh, and script full name. This is just going to be, okay. Full script path. Okay, so this checks if the folder for this script is the current user app data roaming, then it will do nothing. <laughs> so it's probably already where it wants to be. Otherwise, it goes ahead and cmd slash copy um, copies this currently running script to current user app data roaming, and it overwrites it. Okay, so let's say copy command for that. Copy command to move script to app data roaming. Dunzo. Okay, so then that is also still included here in this uh, else statement. And that is seemingly going to run a command, seemingly run that function. Uh, so let's call that run command. Make sense? Okay, that's clearing some of it up now. Okay, so we are gonna run command on all of this stuff, but I don't know what these functions are yet. So var vemgazunath get object, this is probably w script. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Well, this function right here, that kind of makes sense already. L gamma, <laughs> that is just going to end up reversing the string. So we can call that reverse string. And our new Jelfo, that bad boy is gonna take this and just concatenate those together. Doing some good antivirus evasion, doing some obfuscation, ladies and gentlemen. So let's slap all that together in our little node interpreter and let's just make that that. And since that literally just returns this, we can just kind of replace all occurrences of that with this. <laughs> make our lives easier here. Oh God, I just straight up removed it. Paste that in. Do it, okie dokie. So we don't need that function anymore. And get object and reverse string is just gonna end up doing, how, how many times do we use reverse string? A few, but if that's just gonna end up being reversed in this get object command, I'm pretty sure that's just gonna end up being W script dot shell. So let's take that string and reverse it. I'm just do this in Python because I don't know the syntax for it in Node off the top of my head. And this must be like a new CL CS CLS ID, like the class ID things in Windows. I am not too sharp on that, but we should have our Windows VM crank in here. So let's see if I can do that exact same thing. Can I uh, invoke a class by like via PowerShell or something to do that? To like simulate this exact same functionality in WScript? That I don't know. I'm going to assume that this is WScript.shell because it has this run function. So let me do that. I'm just gonna call this WScript shell. And then it runs that command. I don't know why it saves this as a variable because it doesn't seem to do anything. Um, and then we have a registry persistence thing. Reg add with a cmd slash c, hq current user, software, Microsoft, Windows current version run, adding the value lol. <laughs> lol, lol, hacker's gonna lol. 
Um, it makes it as a string and adds in our current user app data roaming with our script name. Okay, so eventually this notepad.js file does want to be in current user app data roaming under its name. So I will call this function persist in registry. And this must be uh, reg add command for persistence. Good enough. Okie dokie. Split plus is good. Let's figure out what our JKKW function's doing. Actually, I wanna know what this thing is. Do we end up calling this? Is that different from, that is a different CLS ID. If that's the right terminology, I might be saying that wrong. Let's start from the top. Let's take a step back. Let's kind of remind ourselves where we came from, you know. We do a get object. What class has dot username in WScript? Gosh. Gosh, I so wish I... Oh, Cortana, what are you stinking doing? Uh, let's find out. WScript get username how to get username with vbs dot network is that it uh is there a windows like cls id lookup thing cls id keys uh um I guess we could look in like the registry for those classes, but um, is it an app ID? List, is there a list of these? Okay, so CLS IDs look like a GUID and these do not look like GUIDs, do they? No, maybe? Uh. How about an app ID? What the heck's an app ID? Sorry for that epilepsy, guys. <laughs> Windows app ID list. Mm -hmm. Identifies the app ID GUID that corresponds to the name's executable. Um, community malforensics. That sounds kind of cool. That sounds like what I want. Application IDs, those don't seem to be, I think it is a CLS ID. But how do I get a Explorer shell, Explorer network? What would all these be like in a WScript class or like in a object? How's Windows doing? I don't care. Please leave me alone, Cortana. Please get out of my house. Oh God, this is gonna move so slow. Windows in a virtual machine while I'm recording. <laughs> okay. You know what? Let's just right click, please. And create a new little text file. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, you did it. Okay. <laughs> New text file, uh, something, something. Something, something, dot JS. Yep, do it. All right, let's uh, edit this. I'm waiting for Windows Defender to be like, virus. <laughs> I create a single JScript file and it's just like, no. <laughs> um, can I message box that out in JScript? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Let me make this bigger so you guys with eyes can see it. Cause, oh, control plus in notepad stinking works? Are you kidding me? I always thought I had to go into like format to like, you know, change the whole thing. Like change the whole font. All right, let's double click on that. Yep, open it with the Windows based script host, please. Die. Three, one, object expected. Oh, duh, I, I just want that, please. Does message box do it? No. Uh, 
wscript.shell echo is a thing. If this is in fact wscript.shell, I'm pretty sure. Hello. Once again, let's go for even better. Now we're talking, boys. It needs a friggin' semicolon? I guess it's JScript, right? Come on. Does that need parentheses? Gosh, I wish I were so much better at this. Object does not dis... Excuse me? Okay, you know what? Let's let's move on, I think. Let's just keep cruising. This guy is going to do something funky. This is going to get seemingly PowerShell. Power in reverse, right? P-O-W-E-R at PowerShell. This is literally just generating the string for PowerShell. And it's reversing it. So this can totally be replaced with just <laughs> the string... PowerShell. <laughs> Imagine that. Let's replace all those. Let's totally nerf that function since we don't need it anymore. And let's see where else it's running PowerShell. Oh, wow. It runs PowerShell right at the very top with our GF variable that we knew was PowerShell code. Okay. It's all coming together, ladies and gentlemen. This is slowly becoming actually understandable, which is nice. Uh, but we don't know about this thing yet. I don't know what path that is. Ultimately, it's just the same one. I don't. I don't know what like CLS ID or whatever the thing is. It's getting. It's getting the object that allows us to get the username. But that's literally it. So I don't think we need to. We don't need to waste our time on that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get back to the good old PowerShell code. Um, I think now that we've made it a good understanding of this, let's just call this the WScript network, as that is seemingly the only thing that uh, this is going to end up being this. So we can kill that entire function yet again. And now that reverse string is gonna give us that new, whatever that CSLID is. Can I just look for that? Oh, I need to kind of reverse it, don't I? Let's look for this. Let's do like a, Let's Google that bad boy. Get object that thing. Malicious code hacker. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to the spooky, scary parts of the internet, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, strap in here. Where's our? Where's my little get object new ID? Like control F for that. It's not even in here whatsoever. Okay. Uh... I don't like these advertisements. We still can't believe Mar <laughs> You didn't see this here, folks. This wasn't in a John Hammond video. Booking confirmation, booking that thing, new shipment.vbs and some hybrid analysis malware. Detected a Suricata alert. Created guarded memory stuff. Yeah, I mean, this isn't the exact same thing that I'm looking at though, right? It's a Visual Basic script file. Wait, is that the same hash that I had? Is that the same hash? It's VBS though, it's totally not. It's totally completely different. Let me go back to my, uh, let's get back to my terminal here. Let me just do a SHA-256 some hash on our original Notepad.js. No, it's just D9 at the very start and that was DFBE. That does some weird stuff, though. You can tell by the way that it is. <laughs> Look at that process tree. That's insane. Gotta love it, man. Gotta love some good malware. Oh, Joe Sandbox got some good stuff, and they're using a new object. I need to stop. I, I need to stop. We're, we're going down rabbit holes that we really don't need to be because we kind of know where this goes next. So... Where else do we use reverse string? Just there. What is this function? Did we never clear that? Oh no, it's PowerShell. It's more PowerShell we didn't finish. Um, let's take this and let's reverse it. So back in our Python, I'm gonna slap that in. And what? What? Did I do that wrong? IEX, this is the original string, reverse it. 
Am I, do I have that syntax wrong? I just did this. <laughs> what is happening? Um, please sub. Reversed. Right? Oh, oh, they're separate strings. I'm a Dumbo. So this this all needs to be put together first. I'm I'm just stupid. I'm sorry. I was totally misreading that. This is why you need like syntax highlighting everybody. That's why you got to open up a little B Python. Now we're cool. Okay, there we go. Let's say A can equal that thing all added together. And now I have that original string and then I can reverse that. And now it's actually stinking readable. Incredible. All right. So JKW can be totally replaced with, gosh, dang it. I lost the string. That. And let's make sure that that is uh, actually regular expression accepted. Do it. Oh, that's a mess. Oh God, why did I do that? Does that have a, yeah, it has a new line in it for some reason. So we don't need a reverse string anymore, but we know that that was piped in. Like the GF, the GF variable was piped into this, right? So that's just gonna ex end up executing that PowerShell code. So we got VB script network. Let's reverse this thing too. Just for our just for our good safekeeping. Finish up this script so we kind of know everything that this thing does and it's not not a mystery. We can get rid of our reverse script function. And this is basically deobfuscated. So let's call this like uh, ran command. Our string plus doesn't need to exist anymore. Our reverse string is only being defined now. It's no longer being called. Run command, persistent registry, string plus and everything. And then there's a little persistent. Okay, I think at this point we can call this done. We are 30 minutes into the video and we have finished up with this JScript code. We have known and figured out that this GF variable is doing some peculiar stuff in binary. And you can actually see that in this PowerShell code because it ends up taking every line, every portion of this, it's that percent sign is a for loop uh, alias in PowerShell. And for every single binary byte here, it gets a string value from it and converts it from binary. So it's two in 32 with base two, right? Being said there, so it knows it's binary and it joins together as a string and then it runs IEX and has a little neat obfuscation in that you can throw back ticks literally stinking anywhere in PowerShell code and PowerShell will still do it. Uh, so it invoke expression, IEX being the alias for invoke expression on all of that binary. Wow. Why did we do this, guys? <laughs> so let's get that PowerShell code going, all right? You know, let's start to let's start to deobfuscate this thing. Um, deobfuscated PowerShell, also known as GF. So let's do a ping. So we ping until we have internet connection. Is that right? We only send one ping every time. Let's try that in a, a genuine PowerShell. I could probably do that in Windows again, but you know what? I'm sorry, I could probably do that in my Linux PowerShell again. I'm pretty sure that command will be understood and ran. Let's, uh, let's make this bigger. I think, I think 36 is big enough. How about you? How about you? What do you think? Let's slap that in. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Ping is gonna run quiet, so what was that command? I was probably doing some sketchy scuff. <laughs> so if I'm using Wimic to OS get a, a random port on an internal IP address, something XSL. No one knows what John was up to that day. What else we got? Then we get this T56FG variable and we get a enum proto call type to that thing. What is that? 
Let's find out what that is. Slap that in. What is our T56FG, TLS 12? Oh, we're doing some TLS stuff, everybody. Let's uh, put that guy back. And let's say TLS 12. How about that? So we got a security protocol and we're doing maybe some encryption stuff. We're going to end up doing some system management automation AMSI. <laughs> is this an AMSI bypass? Oh, it is. Oh my gosh, it is. Is that? It sets the value to null and true. Holy cow. Yo, that, that, I hope that's an AMSI bypass. AMSI bypass? Let's uh, bring these back to normalcy. I should probably have just done a find and replace for this rather than do it by hand, but uh, you know. Get field, AMSI, and it failed. Non, oh, non-public static. So it's getting those fields that is going to be replaced with pub as we saw and then it adds in static set value null to true uh, and then it goes to do some web client stuff so i don't exactly think there's anything more to that is that literally all it takes let me try let's do a sanity check let's just run amsi utils in our windows vm to see if amsi is running currently which it is dope Dipping dots. That's kind of what it should be doing. So now let's slap in that AMSI bypass here. And no, it didn't like that. I, it weirded me out because that's not like... I don't think that's all that you need to do for an AMSI bypass. I feel like that's a little small. I don't know. Uh, maybe it does something else. Because it doesn't store that in anything. It literally doesn't. Sorry, I'm flailing my windows around with Alt Tab. Let's uh, let's go back. So, service Point Manager. It sets the security protocol to TLS 12, and then we get a TTY. So let's uh, slap those together so we can read that just fine. And that needs to be brought into IEX. In which case, that just makes TTY be a web client object. Yeah. Uh, TTY is a web client object. So we can download stuff. And then we do some reflection. Shambly, loaded Visual Basic, MV can equal a Microsoft Visual Basic interaction, call by name, down. that's kind of a cool trick. I've never actually seen that set up. That way you don't have the full like new object net.webclient dot download string. It just kind of calls it. It's gonna at least a little bit separated and that way you could do more obfuscation on this. That's kind of neat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look at that URL, everybody. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so holy cow, you don't you don't see that anywhere else other than here, ladies and gentlemen. This is where it's really at. All right, sketchy URL, <laughs> sketchy URL. We're gonna download string from attack.jpg. Let's see if that bad boy's still a thing. You know what? I'm on Linux. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a ballsy guy. <laughs> Does that literally still exist? Yo, yo, hit me with it. Give it to me. I want it. Let's curl it down. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Let's output that to a good old attack.jpg. Ooh. What you see there, boys? ASCII text. Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? Loading image, shush, shush, sublime text. No, 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 no. Let's make that, let's make that real. Uh, ASCII uh, JPEG, and it's probably, it's, is that passed to IEX, honestly? Oh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna end up passing it to IEX after it filters it out. 
So we'll call that thing uh, raw payload. How about that? Because that's going to end up taking the contents from this, splitting it on percent signs, and then for every single object there, it's going to consider it to be hex. Uh, and then join them all together? Oh, 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 it's okay, so they are all hex and it's gonna bring it all together. So um, let's call that final payload. Yeah, yeah. And then it invokes it. So we're up to stage three, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check out attack.jpg. Dot text and <laughs> okie dokie. This is just like a URL encoded thing because it's hex and with the percent signs. So you know what? Let's uh let's let's make a little mess here. Let's call uh, uh reverse or let's call it like stage three. Stage three dot python. We'll do a little user bin invoke environment python. Uh, let's open our attack.jpg.txt. Uh, do we want those bytes? I don't exactly care, honestly. Well, let's do a little context manager because I'm on the internet and people are gonna yell at me. So with open that thing as handle, let's do handle.read. Actually, let's save that. And I don't want it to be bytes, guys. You know, I decided, I, I thought really long and hard about it and I thought it's just not worth it. Who cares about encoding and stuff? So we get all that, we do the contents, we do contents dot split by parentheses and let's get a little p print so we can see that displayed nice. Let's do uh, from p pin in pin p print. That's exactly how you say it. And let's run that stage three Python. Excuse me, syntax error. What are you going on about? I forgot a parentheses. That's exactly why you were totally right. I was wrong. Um, okay. Now we got all that stuff. There's a lot, dude. <laughs> it's pretty big. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's strip that uh, because it might be some other noise and nonsense in there. And let's uh, start to convert those to hex. So let's do int of, wait a second. Yeah, four x in that. Let's do int of x base 16. And now we got the actual hex numbers, um, and let's say, what do we want to call that? I mean, those are bytes, aren't they not? Let's just convert it to, convert it to a character, convert it to a character, please. It's gonna end up, it's gonna give me Python code. It's gonna give me PowerShell code. I'm sorry. So character, all those now, let's join that all together and let's do a little print on that guy. Sorry, sorry, I'm frantically moving my windows around and now we've got this. Does it ever end? <laughs> let's uh, tee that out to a good old stage four.ps1. And let's see what we got here. Oh, so this is a good trick. This is gonna end up being IEX because it's just taking the character arrays from it. And it sets alias of that thing to IEX. So, yeah, power, let's get back to PowerShell and just show you that. Like, look, it's IEX. Invoke expression, ladies and gentlemen. Let's call it what it is. Call a spade a spade or whatever the cool kids say these days. So Sal, that thing can just, because Sal is set alias. Commandlet set alias. Trying to be spooky again, guys. Sorry, flailing around. Uh, set alias to IEX. Just set IEX to what it is, guys. Don't, don't beat around the bush here with me. You know what you're up against. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't have any idea what I'm doing. Um... This is beautiful. Take a look at this system dot app at 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 our asterisk asterisk. <laughs> yeah, doing a little app domain, passing it to IEX. All right, let's nerf that thing real quick. Uh, app domain. We can remove that little replace syntax here because it's stupid and a waste of time. So 
That's going to give us app domain. We'll call that that. I will use the dollar sign here just in case. Oh, no, no, that's going to clobber that variable and that's going to be bad. So, so this, though, can be current domain. Um, and I know that this is going to end up building us out to have the capability of reflection. And I see literally yet another payload in here, I'm pretty sure, in this hex. And that's going to be disgusting. So let's see what we got. Um... This has some white space in it for no reason. And string of this can equal all that. Does that ever get replaced with anything? Yeah, it replaces at signs with zeros. Let's do that, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to steal that code and then once again slap it in Python. I, I did copy and paste that. I swear I did. I literally hit control, control, uh, control, shift C, control, shift V. That's how you can copy and paste. Are you just not letting me do it? A right click paste it. Okay. It's, it's, it's too big. 20,000, 201,000 characters selected. Oh, I see now. I understand the dilemma. <laughs> that might be actually something difficult for you to do because there's a lot of data in there. So I would tell sublime text to do it but that might be a horrendous idea. Does this one do the exact same thing? It does. Uh, so let's try that after we replace all the other things. Invoke null null with replace at sign at sign with vo. So it's just gonna end up running invoke. And you can see the IEX there. So Let's remove that replace and nerf this thing to get to invoke. So we do a current vein invoke IEX. Um, this is going to end up being a, let's just say that's gonna get a like module. I don't care, whatever it's called. Load, so it loads it reflectively I might be wrong in that explanation, but we do replace all that. And this thing is going to end up being this original string modified and pulled into bytes. Basically, I'm assuming just converted out of hex, it looks like, right? I'll zoom out here. Because this function is going to take the parameter, split it, and remove all of these periods and parentheses, but those aren't in there whatsoever. Are they not? Let's take this big long thing. Let's uh, copy and paste it into another sublime text window, and then let's try and do that find and replace and literally break everything. Let's do it at signs. Oh dear God, sublime text is already chugging along. And let's replace them with zeros. Control Alt Enter to find and replace all. And let's see if Sublime Text crashes. Let's monster break. He's chugging along. God help us. <laughs> that was a real bad idea. Why did I do that? I knew, I knew like all along. And you guys were telling me like, John, don't do it. Don't, don't put that evil on sublime text. <laughs> Shit, I never even saved like the original stage four. Or did I? I never even like made a copy of uh, stage four dot PS1 as its original. Oh, oh, did it do it? Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. Um, Let's call it like payload for dot text. Let's call it dot hex. Nice work, sublime text. We gave you time to recover. We gave you the time of your life. And you really came through. I really appreciate that, man. What else we got here? Waves dot that thing. Is this doing some like process injection is this gonna like 
So we're obviously going to end up loading some C sharp binary or .NET assembly thing that we could probably expand and look at. Um, but waves is probably going to end up being like the namespace of the class and that weird thing. And this function will likely end up doing something, but it's taking notepad.exe and loading more code in, which has to be this thing. So I wonder if that, that's got to be something new. That's got to be like some process injection, I think. I think, you know, I think. Mm. Let's mess with this um, function though. But there, I don't know, let me get back to payload four because there literally is no stuff in this. There, there, there is no parentheses period period in that. I don't think there is. But that's what we end up doing with this seemingly will end up and become C sharp. Uh, so let's take that and let's write another PowerShell script, actually. Let me pause the video. Oh, God, what is happening? <laughs> I didn't mean to copy and paste it. Please don't do it, Terminal. Okay. Goodbye, Python. If I didn't kill Sublime Text, I certainly killed you. Let me pause the video for a quick second. I check some notifications on my phone. All right, we're back at it. Let's see what we got left. Where are we at? I remember, I'm trying to remember. We have payload4.hex. So let's make a uh, um, recover payload4.hex. Oh, no, I want that to have a Python extension because it's going to be a Python script. Um, so we can copy basically the same thing we did from here, except we're gonna end up using bin ASCII and we will in fact read it as a uh, binary or bytes. So that way we could get uh, payload4.hex. Uh, and then we have the contents. So let's do a print binascii.unhexlify of the contents, which should be bytes already. So theoretically, I should get a bunch of binary data spat out on my screen, which I do. Excellent. Um, so let's save that as stage five, bro. Bro, we're going, we're going for a wild ride here. And let's just open like a stage five dot exe, uh, write that in bytes as handle uh, or as H because we already use handle. So let's do it H dot write stage five. Write, properly spelled write. Ha, imagine that English, English words. Python three recover. There we go. Now I have a stage exe that is a DLL. You know what, we were we were close, guys. We were close. Let's call that stage five dot, dot DLL. Okie dokie, uh, let's, let's make it, modify that script to have the same thing. Um, so before we dive into that, let me uh, clean these up. So let's convert to hex. Um, Let's put this function away because we kind of know what it's doing already. This will be, um, can I call that stage five? Like C sharp bytes. Oh God, sublime text. Come back to me. C sharp bytes. Um, and then we load that in. Um, loaded library, and that will probably end up executing uh, or imported load library, I guess. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not using the right like terminology and lingo to describe all this, but now that we've imported that library, that C sharp DLL that we can understand and explore with IL spy or DN spy, uh, waves is something that is seemingly now brought into our context. So, we're gonna end up probably injecting or doing something peculiar with this function here inside of that into notepad.exe. So uh, before we dive into that, let's go explore this. Uh, let's go explore that DLL file. Let's go back to our terminal here. And <laughs> Python has came back to us, everybody. Hallelujah. Um, let's run ILSpy in here. And 
do I want to close that virtual machine? I'm sketched out that it's still kind of like eating up memory and stuff. And this video, this video has gotten pretty fun, you know, I think. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's open up that IL spy real quick. See how we do. Okay. And forgive my, forgive my malware <laughs> present in here. Uh, what did I call this? Notepad JS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stage 5.dll. Mm, what do we got? Assembly title music. Can I zoom in on this, please? Can I? I want to edit this so you people can actually see it. Seriously, how do I? Options. Yes. Display. Uh, font size. Bigger than that, please. All right. Now, now you can see it, I hope. Let's see what we got here. Stage 5 DLL using runtime compiler services and interop services, so we're probably going to be doing some memory stuff. Uh, assembly title is music, uh, which I've, I think, repeatedly said, but that's kind of funny, <laughs> if, especially if waves is what's going to end up doing. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. All right. References. Is there anything to read in here? Melons. What is this? Obviously a system. Oh God, please don't, please don't actually pour all that out right now. It pulls in some kernel 32 stuff. Can I get anything out of melons? No. We got any resources in here? What is this? Is it draw icons? Is it gonna like actually pretend to look like What is it? What are, what are in these, man? Are these pictures? Are these images? I'm going to run foremost on this just to be wacky. Uh, sorry. Spastic terminal as usual. Let me, uh, let me do a little foremost on my good, good friend stage five. <laughs> Let's see if we got anything in there. No, just a DLL. We could do like a bin walk, like a hard bin walk. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Let's see what we got. Okay, okay. There's a lot of randomness in this. I don't like this. We're in over our heads now, ladies and gentlemen. Holy crap. There is so much stuff in this. What is this Costura? I see that I've seen that before. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is all obfuscated. Anyway, let's get let's look into waves because honestly, that this function is the one that we know it gets executed in RAM. So, which is the one? Let, let's totally for the moment ignore all that other noise. But I'm sure there's plenty of stuff to dive into in there. We end up running waves.t4hjug, which is that, and we run our good y78hj, which is that thing. Uh, five, five. So it takes a string, which we know was notepad.exe and it decompresses as a gzip the bytes that are passed in. So this decompressed gstrip, gzip, sorry, is going to end up doing more stuff that's very messy Little switch cases here. Other randomness. Um, let's uh, let's try and just take that binary data. Let's try and take that hex data and decompress it as a gzip, and then understand what that toto function is going to end up doing. Because I'm sure it's going to do some spooky. It might do some uh, process injection because this new payload is what we are running with that function. And we haven't decoded that yet. So let's set Sublime Text on another wild goose chase to replace all of these at signs with null bytes. Here you go, everybody. 
I don't know why IL Spy keeps giving me tool tips. That's very annoying. Stop it, IL Spy. Okay. Go, Sublime Text. <laughs> Now, you can leave your comments, everybody. You can tell me, like, John, just use said. John, just use Arch. Just use Vim. Just uh, completely rewrite the kernel. Yeah, I could. But why? Um, Wavesinject.hex, I suppose, is what we will call that. And let's... Convert that out of hex. They do convert it out of hex, do they not? They do. They do. So that's going to end up being a, a gzip stream as we know now. Um, let's. Should we Python it up again, or should we do some like Cyber Chef? Let's do. Let's do a little Cyber Chef. You know, let's let's appeal to the masses. There we go. Slap that in. Do a sweet little from hex. A whole lot of nonsense. Let's get a little gun zip, as I like to call it. And now we have this thing. Ooh, and it's another executable. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, we get the little notification. Hey, this program cannot be ran in DOS mode. Got another binary, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's save this thing download dot dat um what is this is this stage six or something right now let's call it a dll yes save it let's move our downloads download stage six dll over here and let's see if it is in fact a dll nope it's not we were wrong god man over for two guys let's call this an exe um, oh, and that is not a .NET assembly, so I would not be able to do my good old IL spy or DN spy cheats. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to actually reverse it with Ghidra or Idra or Hopper, and oh goodness, I don't want to. Let's see what you do with strings. <laughs> now we're starting to get into the stuff that I'm not good at. Rich buy, rich buy. That was a weird one. I see rich buy at the very, very top here. Is this gonna end up being like a crypto miner or something? That would be nice. Like if we came all this way and it was like, ah, I'm just a crypto miner. <laughs> Is there any like indication of Monero? Is there any indication of coin hive? All these strings are useless, man. Where are we going? Oh, now we see stuff. Network down, message size. Is this gonna end up being like C2? File exists, file too large. Those are like genuine messages though. Argument out of domain? Too many files open in system? Those aren't normal. I don't think. Core exit process. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Why does malware always include the dates? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's in like some library that gets pulled in, but it's always just so funny to me and see that in strings. <laughs> um, where's the good stuff, guys? Oh. Is this going to be like a C thing? Is this going to be a C++ thing? CMD.exe? Doing some event viewer? Keystrokes? Is this doing like a keyboard logging? I don't know what's happening right now. Key3.db? Logins.json? Firefox stored logins? Not oh, a little info stealer. Trying to grab browser information, cache stuff, license code.tech, improperly spelled license. I know, like, you guys might think I'm dumb for just looking at strings, but seriously, you can get a lot of, like, glistening. Remco started by Watchdog? What is that? 
What is that? What is Remco's? Remco's rat. Remco's rat. Is that what I'm dealing with right now? Is this it? Did we find it? Remote control and surveillance software. Updated yesterday, 17th of 2021, February. I said those out of order. What? What is this? <laughs> is this like the latest version? Because that would be kind of cool in a horrific way. <laughs> you know me, like that'd be kind of slick in a horrible, nightmarish way. I appreciate this malware going outright and telling me what it's called, though. <laughs> like, you know, I really am thankful for you just saying, oh, Remcos, we got restarted. Some registry locations, Remcos. V oh, my gosh. <laughs> Breakingsecurity.net. We see you. Is that like a safe site? Is that like a... Is that like a good, good thing? Or is that just straight up shady? I don't, I genuinely don't know. I genuinely don't know. So, we specialize in advanced ethical hacking. <laughs> Guys, this is too cool. What? That's Remco's there. Vieto Keylogger, Poseidon Mailer. Holy cow! Why have I never heard of this before? This is insane. They have so much stuff. Oh, of course, a small free video game. Why not? <laughs> is it all open source? Are you for real? Oh no 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 no. Okay. Let me let me let me keep looking into Remco's because order Remco's professional. Download Remco's free with limited functionality. Read the instruction manual. I kind of want to do that. Control your personal computer from a remote location or not your personal computer <laughs> or someone else's personal computer or server or data center. Runs on any windows. Encrypts the connections. This is unreal, guys. I'm glad we got here, like, within the hour. Remote control the screen. Remote chat. Control center. This is what? Maybe I'm hyping this up a little too much. You know, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe my inner YouTuber is just getting a little too excited about things that aren't all that exciting, but I mean, look at this. My inner YouTuber. Shut up, John. <laughs> what the, John, what the, what the heck are you talking about? Shut up. You're not a YouTuber. There is seemingly nothing else all that interesting in here. The copyright though, Dinkumware, I'm pretty sure I've seen that around. I think it's just part of a module, isn't that? Dinkumware. Uh, yeah, these are the C libraries to be able to do peculiar stuff. Not even that. I think, I'm think i pretty sure these have a genuine purpose. Dinkumware, yeah. Oh, no. They're just the premier supplier of actual C and C++ libraries. So, you know, there's that. Padding, 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 padding. What? Is there anything else peculiar and interesting in this? Or have we just kind of found the smoking gun to be like, nope, that's remote control. That's Remcos or Remcos. I like, oh, that's got to be what the buy is for. Like, hey, go buy the actual program rather than using this cracked software that you found on the spooky wookie dark web. <laughs> 
Remkos is another rat. 40 nets got some stuff on it back in 2017. Here they're using it with a macro dock. I like that it's called Remy.exe in the screenshot. And they obfuscate it a little bit too. Oh, it's packed with Empress? Or maybe the older version was? I didn't see like a UPX string. I actually haven't heard of Empress before though. So I will have to add that to my mental repertoire. Obfuscation of the malware practically ended after the two pack. <laughs> yeah, at that, at that point, we just stopped obfuscating. We thought it was good enough. According to their website, Breaking Security, this version was just released last month relative to that article. Wow. What a wild ride, guys. Now that we've, now that we kind of diagnose this as Remco's, we we went a long way to get here. Look at these the usage though. Like, hey, we got all these machines that you're, we're monitoring the event logs for you. You can start, oh, you could start all the other programs if you want. Oh, no, 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 other, other software. I'm sorry, okay. I thought it would be like, just drop the keylogger in place. More and more applications like Remco's are being released publicly, luring new perpetrators with their easy usage. Yeah. That's like some IOCs here. Oh, we've got some IOCs from this video. <laughs> that that funky URL we saw earlier. <laughs> what else do we see in here? I uh, Go away. Thanks. Trend Micro has got some good stuff. This is in December of 2019. Germany-based security firm breaking security. Germany-based firm sec breaking security. I don't know if I could, you know. Uh, coronavirus spam? That was in 2019, though. Wait, what the heck? This email is from April 3rd, 2020, and this article was released 2019. Can you see the future, Trend Micro? I know you guys were good, but I didn't know you were that good. Startup persistence, of course. Bypasses AV, maintains persistence injects into a legitimate Windows process like notepad.exe, as we saw, information theft, stealing all potential of those Firefox cache and Windows caches, et cetera, backdoor commands. Spooky. Holy cow. I want to learn more about Remco's. 3.1, 3.0. This is the one that came out like yesterday though. Optimize and improved to be faster. Fix agent crash. Copy IP address. Wow. Did it say the version? Did it say when we were running strings in there? Did it say the version? Remcos, 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 V. Oh, it cuts it out. Remcos V something. It's got to be filled in by the actual. No. You know what? Let's do a little hopper, guys. You know what? We might as well. We're already this far into it. Um, did I actually open hopper or did I just open my virtual machine again? <laughs> hopper, please. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. I'm Okay. Um, we want to go to notepad.js with our stage 6.exe, I think is where we are. We'll go to our entry point here. Um, and let's try and understand this sub that thing, that thing, that thing. I want to find the strings where you ended up saying Remco's version, Rem Cos version. And you can see even more policy system enable Lua. Oh, oh, that's just trying to add in like the RDP stuff. I want to see this version number. Where do you put me? Remcode version 3.10 Pro. Oh my gosh. 
literally released yesterday. <laughs> that is insane. I can't even, I, I don't even want to like edit this video because I want to get this out like right away. <laughs> Show people some of this cool stuff. Wow. That was a wild ride, everybody. I think that's as far as I want to go. Um, I've, I think we've diagnosed that, okay, this is a remote control, remote access Trojan through layers and layers of payloads and obfuscation. Um, I hope you had fun on that Safari ride through JavaScript or JScript, through PowerShell, through C Sharp, through an executable that isn't going to end up being a .NET assembly um, and doing some of that detective work to go find this thing out on the internet. Uh, I think that... Truth be told, I, and I'll be honest, I didn't, I, this was not staged beforehand. I saw this J script and I'm like, this would make a really good video. So I just dove in and recording and I literally haven't seen this before. And this honestly has been really cool. I don't know what else to say or do in this video, but I hope that this was a lot of fun. And I hope that this even takes it further than uh, what we did in that last malware analysis video. I know a lot of people love those or love that video and hopefully we can do a lot more, but we did some cool stuff in this and I think that was a blast. I think that was fun. If you guys haven't done all the YouTube algorithm things and you enjoy this video, please, please, please leave a comment, you know, say whatever you'd like, hopefully something nice. Um, maybe like the video, I'd be super appreciative of that. If you could subscribe and I've been doing my homework, I've been learning a little bit about kind of the whole YouTube subscription thing, YouTube algorithm thing and uh, hitting the bell actually means that, hey, you're gonna get the notifications for real, not just be totally absorbed and lost in the abyss of the YouTube machine. Uh, and that way you'll actually be able to get notified when I, when I post a new video. So if you like this stuff and you wanna keep coming back, I would really, really appreciate that. And this has been a ton of fun, everybody. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming to hang out. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully we can do more stuff like this, but uh, I love you. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. No video outro because I'm just gonna straight up upload this. Love ya, goodbye. <laughs>